Hey, it's your boy Consaviz34 coming to you here for another Saturday night stream. Happy 420, everyone. Uh, here I uh, am not partaking in any specific festivities uh, for that holiday, but some people do, some people don't. You know, I just I, I know uh, many people that are. Uh, you know, <laughs> but we're gonna get uh, started today with uh, some talk about DMB. We're gonna talk about some things uh, with Dave and Tim. First, in the world of Dave Matthews Band, we're going to talk about something in the water, a little bit of a preview. And then we're going to talk about some Ticketmaster page drops. And um, also, in this video, I'll work in some information about Woodstock 50. It's, it's starting to be Firefest. We just need Ja Rule, and it'll be Firefest. Uh, so let's start off first with Dave and Tim. They're playing tonight in South Carolina. They got some severe storms that was popping off. I this past week and it all are out the throughout the south. Uh, there's been some severe storms, and you know I hope everyone out there is safe. Um, I know there have been some unfortunate last week and some fatalities out there, and I know uh, from just from my line of business and working, you know Arkansas is flooded. Other parts of the south are flooded. There's there's wind damage. There's tornado damage from this last week. So everyone stay safe out there. Uh, we are going to take a look at Dave and Tim first. And what's uh, something that I thought was interesting is, is there a bad Dave and Tim set? Is there a show where Dave Maddox and Tim Reynolds play together? And you're like, you know, that set just uh, just wasn't that good. And I, I haven't done an extensive deep dive. I only can know what I've researched. But there really, you really can't go wrong with Dave and Tim. But as I'm here looking at the, the set list uh, on my phone, uh, this show has some great stuff so far. You have a, a So Damn Lucky and the Best of What's Around. Uh, you have a bartender. You have a crush. And what I think is a song that I fell in love with again, I, I liked it from the jump. Uh, I heard it for the first time ever in Hartford, Connecticut when it made its debut, with a band making its debut with a song. Where Virginia in the Rain is, at, is song number 13. Uh, if you if you count the Tim solos, the 13th perform uh, song here. But this set, uh, just looking at the set, I'm not saying the show is probably amazing. And show, I'm sure everyone's having fun there. This set could use a couple break, you know, a couple X factors. You know, come tomorrow in mercy to me. I know songs may have special meanings to people, and they are upbeat, happy songs about Dave's life recently. But those songs, yeah, I mean, those those flooding, what could have been another song that would have been great. A little disappointing to see those uh, come tomorrow. Just great message. But I just don't think it's that that I, I just ah, you hear it once or twice. That's all you need to hear it. And then Mercy, um, a great song uh, message wise. But to me, again, still not good. Better Dave and Tim than the full band. You know, those kind of take up spots of stuff that could have been popping. Hey, we got a trip in Billy's and then a warehouse uh, sandwiching grave digger. So that's pretty cool um, as well. But, you know, we. so I don't think it's a bad show. I think that, again, you look at this set and there are ups and there are downs to me as far as what I would like to hear and what I wouldn't. That's everyone. Everyone has their own taste. So, but I, I just really think that the, the, I would rather see a couple of Dave and Tim shows and one Dave Matthews full band show than the vice versa. If I had the option and if someone was going to, you know, if it's logistically possible. And the reason I say that is because the, the Dave and Tim show really gives you stuff that you don't get to hear from the full band anymore. Now the band has always been loud, uh, but not as loud as it's been now. And the band has always had a, a, a thing where Dave isn't always heard. You know, you got the horn, Roy Moore, who, who plays loud, you had Boyd, um, but you still could hear Dave Moore in the older days. Best thing about Dave and Tim, you can hear Dave's guitar. Uh, that is, that's an amazing thing. Hearing Dave's Matthews guitar is a pretty magical thing. You don't hear it. Um, like I was saying last stream, uh, one of the things I don't like about the, the, the Seville Night One show is Satellite. Tim Riddles is so loud on Satellite with these electric guitar playing everything Dave's playing. And it's stuff like that is played with Dave and Tim. It's better because it's a better blend and mix. And that's what I think that that intrigues me about these Dave and Tim shows. 
they play more songs. So you're gonna, the chances are, even if you have the mercies and the come tomorrows, to me that I'm not a fan of, you're gonna get stuff. There's more songs, so more of a chance that you're gonna see something that's great. And then also the stuff that just, with the full band like Mercy that extends on way too long. Mercy, they should just play one verse in the chorus and call it a day with the full band. Um, but the, it's too long with the full band. It takes up space that could be used for other songs, in my opinion. But with Dave and Tim, they're going to just do it real quick. Get it in, get it out, you're done. Same would come tomorrow. Get in, get out, and get gone. Um, and that's what I like about it. So even the stuff you're not as big of a fan of, it's it's quicker with Dave and Tim. Jimmy Thing is quicker if Dave and Tim plays it versus the full band. Um, Jimmy Thing does not have to be 17 minutes, okay? It can be, it's okay if it's a seven or eight minute jam. It's better that way, in my opinion. So I think that's dope about that. And there's certain songs that I can tolerate, even like the Mercies, that are more tolerable with Dave and Tim um, there. And um, the one thing that is sometimes can be cool and also then sometimes annoying is how Tim Reynolds plays higher notes on the 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 high, you know, up up the fretboard. Uh, sometimes, it, I mean, it's, it's hard to do. What Tim does on acoustic guitar is freaking impressive. But sometimes I don't like how he's too, too high pitched. And it just, there's no balance and blend is too high. And he kind of plays over Dave too much. But that's very rarely. And plus, I do that when I play, when I'm lead guitar and acoustic, I've done some acoustic jams and I, it's just, it's, you're trying to, you know, it's something that everyone does who, who, who jams when it's a two person acoustic, then you're going to get louder and high up in the higher registers at times. So it's just a small complaint, but overall, Dave and Tim, you can't go wrong. I would chase five Dave and Tim shows, like I said, over chasing five full band shows because it's just, you get more songs. Even the songs they repeat are just dope. Because you hear, again, Dave's guitar, a very critical thing. Um, yes, uh, Vince uh, says here, yeah, his electric stuff can get too busy. And I, again, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a intermediate guitar player, in my opinion. I perform live um, at stuff, do open mics. But I'm, not, I'm by no means even on the average Joe non-professional and expert. But what Tim does is it, it's too much. For the band, it's too loud, but it's not even just the noise, it's the feeling. You know, some of the best things that I like about certain guitarists like Derek Trucks is the space they have. John Mayer, his newer music, I mean, everything is great with John Mayer. I'm a huge fan of him, and I'm looking forward to seeing him this summer, probably twice. I at least going to see him once. He's leaving more space in his solos, and he's allowing stuff to sit through. Um, and I love that about it, about his newer music too, is that it still hits hard and it has so much space to work with for the live shows. And that's the thing about Tim is he, he does, uh, he does do a little too much, but he is talented. I'm not denying his talent. Um, so that's all I got to say about Dave and Tim. Let's see if we got anything else. Uh, nothing yet. Yes. Uh, yes. Dave Gilmore. I mean, yo, uh, uh, Pink Floyd. I mean, they just like the time, the time, Dark Side of the Moon, just, it's just less is more. Uh, pa thank you, Patrick, for uh, you know giving another great example of that. And I'm trying to learn that on guitar. As a guitarist, I'm trying to do more of that. I tend to overplay. I think most people tend to do that. It's very hard, but you, I'm, again, I'm working on it because I'm more, I'm a bit more rhythm guy and I'm learning more lead as I'm playing in different um, environments live uh, with, with different musicians. Uh, next up, we have something in the water. Just want to do a little bit of a preview. I know many people aren't going to this, but I know some people are. I thought I would just talk about it. Also, it brings in something that's a little less DMB. Um, so something in the water is next weekend. And one of the concerns going back, let's check the weather because I was just in Virginia Beach. So I have it on my phone. Uh, but there's concerns about some severe weather. Friday, 75. Uh, is the high 57 is the low and there's some rain and they're a little worried about that. And Wednesday, they're supposed to get thunderstorms. So they're building the stage right now. They're getting that ready and looking at local news in the 757 area code. But Saturday and Sunday look amazing. 69. Remember, this is this is going to be late April. 69 degrees in uh, the, the, the Virginia Beach area is dope. 71 on Sunday. Uh, there in the low is 59 for both of those nights. So that that's incredible weather uh, there. It's great that they're going to have that. Not too hot, not too cool, 
get a nice ocean breeze. But that's great that it's it's, it's at that. Hopefully the storms do not mess it up because that's the thing about these festivals that are that are on the beach like this or, or just open air in general. When you have storms, and especially with the beach, when you have storms and tides, things like that, it's not a good look if there's going to be lightning and different things because there's no cover. There's no cover. I was just out there jogging the routes uh, on the boardwalk, the entire boardwalk a couple times. There's not anywhere you can escape to within um, you know, a quarter of a mile. Like You have to literally leave the beach. Um, and even so, there's not like little coverings. Like You really would have to go into buildings. So it's not the most ideal place to cover for rain. Going to other beaches across the country, there's not really much space for people to hide. It's open for a reason, but they don't have uh, different uh, facilities and different, even just park things on the, the boardwalk and uh, the bike trails that you could just go to from the show. So, I mean, hopefully it doesn't rain and the rain is early in the day or it's just very small. That's going to be a big thing. Now, oh my God. Tim, Tim Solo. We got a Tim Solo coming on with uh, the live Dave, Dave and Tim. Um, the big thing is this. If you're going to go there, public transit is your friend. They only have 3,000 general parking spaces for the whole the, the beachfront area, the oceanfront area. Um, Ryan O'Connor, Dave snapping right now. Totally can hear his guitar. Way better. Just played Warehouse. Okay, so and that, thank you for the update, Ryan. Uh, yeah, and that's the thing is the warehouse. You know that was after Grave Digger, I believe, on the set. Again, a song where now again, he, there's been all those older versions you still can't hear him, but back in the day, he was more of a presence when it was before you had Tim Lap. Tim was been had played Red Rocks, you could hardly hear him, but that's amazing. Less is more. So the warehouses are. Um, yeah, talking tunes. I can see you as well. Comment on your video. Okay, yeah, and uh, yeah, so Ryan, I agree. Warehouse, just you can hear Dave's parts, and they're very, very cool parts to play as a guitar player to hear. And that's what's awesome about again, Dave and Tim. And then Talking Tunes says, For these Crowd Streets, one of the best engineered albums, too. Yes, I agree. Um, Rapunzel is just a track, not my favorite track from the album. I mean, it's still a great, it's a great song. I mean, I like the, I like the darker stuff, but Rapunzel is a great example of that. The way that they, they, the, the, the sound engineers, you know, got that thing ready. Uh, Lily White and everyone that, that was part of that, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it does at times sound dated, but that's okay. It just, it's crisp and it's smooth. Um, yeah. And then proposing a here on out, right? You did tell me about that. Yeah, I saw that talking tunes. And the problem was, I couldn't see my chat bar last uh, the last time. Um, yeah, I had just kind of left off, and then I saw everything after I left. Um, right? And was that you that proposed talking tunes to be, to hear on out? Was that actually you? I think you had said that. I, I know there was there was a comment, but if oh, congratulations! I hope hopefully yeah, I'm guessing she said you wouldn't tell me if she said no. But that's awesome, man. And uh, yeah, because I I think I'd mentioned my friend uh, that. That was their first song uh, there. Hey, if you need someone to marry, I don't know where you live, but I am certified. I married my friends, and that's who played here on out. My friend who got me the DMV. Um, it was this was a month after the album came out, or so. Just you know, that was June. So when did it come tomorrow? Come on. come tomorrow. I think it came out in June. Well, regardless, in June they were one of the first people I think ever, if not the first. There probably was someone else that beat them to it. Someone got remarried just so they could play here on out, which is worth it. It's a great song. Um, Oh, you're in Ohio. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I'm certified by the Universal Life Church. I come from a family of ministers. Uh, I'm not certified. I'm not an uh, ordained minister, but I could quote the scriptures. I can, I can do it more secular, but uh, yeah, I am certified to marry people, but I know, I know you don't have to, you don't have to choose me, <laughs> but uh, oh, uh, talking to uh, you're from Ohio. So yeah, uh, we have another, another buddy here. Uh, Patrick is a Michigan State fan. I mean, a Michigan. No, 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 not Michigan State. He's a U of M fan, a Michigan fan. So he sees Ohio and he's like, oh, okay, you guys are the, 
the enemy. Sorry, Patrick is a Michigan fan, a Michigan fan. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm sorry, Patrick. I didn't mean to call you the, the, the enemy, the other enemy in your state. So yeah, talking to so if you see some some looks from 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 Patrick in the comments, it's because of that. But that's awesome, man. Congratulations um, on that. But it's it's an amazing song, a beautiful. I'm sure it was an amazing moment for you to to do it, to hear that song, and um, you know, it's something that wasn't played as much until the fall tour. So you never even knew if you were going to get it or not. Could have been played night two, but to do that, that's I mean, that's a song. And I, and I got into to, to sidebar quick. That's a song. Oh, you playing for night one? That's awesome. Um, that's a song that I was in a comment on DMB Family. Um, okay, so you were waiting. Okay. Uh, but that's a song where I say that I don't like you and me. And, um, oh, you were waiting. Oh, they didn't play it until night two. Okay. Oh, you planned it for night one. Oh, they didn't write it. They didn't play it until night two. Right. So you had to hold off, <laughs> you know, get it, push it back. Um, see what we got. Oh, Tim so two step. Uh oh, two step is being played. Um, from Dave and Tim. Uh, they're just breaking news. Two step, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a song where I say this is the Dave I like with romance and love. Lover lay down and here on out, and even well, crush is a no brainer. But even crash into me, even though I don't like it sometimes. And the last couple tours. I've heard it too much, and I'm just like, yeah. I've heard it like twice in a three-run set uh, of going to shows. So I, I just think that those are the songs I like. I don't like you and me. And I think that uh, Talking Tune says something, or someone else said that, like, in another video I said, I don't like you and me, but here on out, it's, just, it's a beautifully written song. It tells me that Dave can write something amazing even this late in his career because a lot of the other stuff that is newer just doesn't stick as much. Great positive messages, they don't stick as much. Um, there, and then let's get back to Sun in the Water. Uh, there, have you heard the new Dave? I haven't heard, I don't think I've, I, I wait, have I heard you? I, I don't know if I've heard that, Patch. I want to say, I've only been to one full band. And then talking to oh the the Seville Night One release. Let me add that. We'll talk about that that sound a little in a, in a little later. Talking tunes, but yeah, let me do Seville Night One raw sound. Now, yeah, I, I yeah, and that's another interesting thing. Um, yeah, so something in the water, but I mean, again, this isn't as big of a thing. But something in the water, three thousand general parking spaces. Uh, I was down there. Um, as well, like I said, uh, last not this was it last? I can't remember. Last weekend I was driving back. Uh, last I was back here last Saturday, but the week you know the week before that I was there from uh, was it April? I got to Virginia Beach April 9th, right as Virginia was coming home with their their national title, and then I left Friday the twelfth uh, in the morning. So I was there that week. And um, something in the water was, you know, there was a lot. It was on the news. People, I was talking to my my grandmother has cousins. She's my grandmother's in her mid 80s and she has cousins in the mid 80s still alive, about four or five of them still alive. Talking to them, talking to my godfather. He's a little younger. He's in his 40s or 50, no, 50s, uh, early 50s, I believe. And then I was just talking to some other people there in the area. And um, I went to dinner with my godfather. There's not a lot of parking. 3,000 spaces. That's for the entire like area of that it's very hard to find parking even on and this is the non-peak season so with the full festival i highly suggest if you're going down there take uber uh there's a trolley for two bucks that you can take there's some other shuttles that are going to be running in the area uh certain hotels have parking if you are a guest if you're making last minute plans to to get uh um oh you saw my instagram talking was yeah it's just beautiful beautiful and it's so affordable to go down there now i didn't get the best of the best hotels but i got a decent one like a three-star hotel but some of the pictures i took those from my balcony i mean i had a balcony like up here in the northeast the value of those of the of the hotels 
I could not get the views I got for those photos. But um, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, uh, I'm a travel bug, not a travel bug, but a road and geography um, addict. And to finally drive the Chesapeake Bay Bridge as, as a driver, not as a someone, a kid in the back seat was very, very cool to see that in the eastern shore of, uh, of Virginia and Maryland and in Delaware. Um, but yeah, down there, there's not a lot of parking. Um, so shuttles is the way to go. Now, if you have a hotel book, check to see if they can get you a parking pass. Get down there on Thursday night to confirm a parking pass because if you don't have one, if your hotel may run out of parking because a lot of people may drive down. They're seeing a lot of traffic from the D.C. area uh, that people from D.C. are going to be coming down there. Baltimore and some of the other East Coast cities, according to the news, they were doing they were seeing where the traffic is for ticket purchases, credit cards, where they're originating from. So a lot of people are going to drive this. This is going to be a, a weekend they drive down. Not many people. I highly doubt many people are flying this. Uh, oh, you live in Western Maryland. Um, I didn't do I-68. Uh, Patrick, I did um, I did 113. I, I went through Delaware. So I did, um, as you can do 13 and 113, I did Delaware Route 1 off of the Jersey Turnpike, off the, and then I did 113 on the Eastern Shore. Um, I was tempted to go through the go through 68 through Richmond and everything, um, but the, it's just it's an extra hour with traffic to do that because I have family and uh, my aunt lives in. Uh, Laurel, Maryland, right by the racetrack. So I used to I used to spend summers down there with my aunt. So um, I was gonna stop by there, but I ended up saying, Nah, I'm not going through DC traffic. I'm not going through Baltimore traffic. And, and so I, I went through the Eastern Shore um, there. What whereabouts, Patrick? What town or city? Because I, like I said, I was I haven't been down there in years. It's been about eight or ten years since I was down there. Down there, to so I used to spend summers there and. Uh, for a month or two with my aunt. But Virginia, but anyway, something in the water. Frostburg, Allegheny County. So is that towards Fred? Is that Frostburg? Is that towards Frederick? Like towards the West Virginia? Because it sounds like Allegheny County. I would assume it's like more towards Pennsylvania. Like where are you in relation to Frederick and uh, Hagerstown? But yeah, I don't, but yeah, I ended up going to Eastern Shore. But this, there's something in the Water Festival. Um, you're gonna, it's the Panhandle, 45 minutes from. Okay, so you're on the handle. Okay, so you're really there. Yeah, okay, you're on the Panhandle. Okay, all right. So yeah, that's the part of Maryland I haven't really seen as much. Um, I did go to Frederick once. Um, Hagerstown, I think it's south of it because Gettysburg is obviously that's in PA. And then, oh, do you remember two step to do you remember? Uh, I can't, I gotta look at a map, I'll look at a map in a second, but um, anyway, yeah, so getting back to something in the water, let's see, yeah, just it's it's gonna be crazy. They say expect road closures, the small little Atlantic Avenue that they have down there, that's that's the street where once you cross Atlantic Avenue, there's hotels and then there's, um, be then there's a beach. I used to go in and out of Maryland, you had a prior ride. Okay. okay, yeah. But um, the, the Atlantic Avenue is the main road before, once you cross Atlantic Avenue, you're, you're at the hotels and you cross the hotels and you get onto the, to the bike path in the beach. Atlantic Avenue is very small. There's not a lot of crosswalks that have the actual things to tell you to walk. I wouldn't be shocked if they shut down parts of Atlantic Avenue. I just think with the, tr the foot traffic, it may not be safe for people to be driving, especially with you know potentially people leaving um, and possibly drinking and driving, and then just security concerns. I wouldn't be shocked if parts of Atlantic Avenue are shut down very, very small. Um, compared to the other major beach cities, like when I look at an Ocean Drive in Miami, like that thing is is set for a festival. You know, one, you know, Dave and Tim were on uh, Miami. I mean, no, Dave, the whole band was Virginia Beach. I mean, no, Miami Beach. Sorry, 
And I, I, for some reason, I keep going. I keep planning vacations to, to beaches where Dave plays. Dave Matthews Band played for the Orange Bowl in South Beach. And then they now they're playing something in the water. And I just plan these hotel, these uh, vacations and booked hotels for different weeks, the wrong weeks to see them um, there. Um, so I, I just think that um, if you're going to this, it's going to be an uh, interesting festival. Another thing that, that I'm interested to see is how the police are going to treat it. The thing about this festival is this may be, I want to say it's one of the blackest uh, DMB festivals that the festivals DMB has played in, but this lineup has majority, it's a hip hop heavy, um, you know, festival. And that's in what the reason I say that is I think I had meant, I don't know if I put it in this video or the last video I had, or if it was a, a Twitter video, but you know, law enforcement treats at times, they treat hip hop heavy festivals different than they treat rock or pop heavy festivals. Um, I don't know. If, I, I mean, I hope. I think everything's going to be fine. I don't think there's going to be too many issues. But the majority of this stuff, you got Migos, Pusha T, SZA, Janelle Monae, uh, Little Uzi Vert, and um, you know, and you got Pharrell. You got Diddy coming out, Missy Elliott, Usher, Snoop, Nerd, Timberland. Like it's going to be a mostly urban um, crowd. And um, that that's the that's the police treat it differently. And I, I've gone, I go to every type of show. Uh, I go to rock, I go to um, alternative, I go I, I used to go to punk rock stuff. Back in the day, I used to go to the Vans Warps tour. I go to hip hop, I go to RB, I go to Soul, like Earth Wind and Fire, uh, Stevie Wonder, BB King, and Buddy Guy. I go to everything. Um, but I just think that the the police treat people differently there than they do for a country concert or a rock concert. Um, and I hope that everyone is treated fairly. I hope there's not many incidences and I hope that the, the fans there are there to have fun and that there's no issues. And I hope that there's no preemptive conflicts with police because it's different. I've seen so many crazy things at a Dave Matthews band or a, a Blink-182 or a, a John Mayer show that I, I haven't seen um, you know, just the way like things are let they let people go. They let them go. But I've seen other incidences that were less severe at hip hop shows and people be treated differently. So I hope that's not a big issue. I don't foresee it too. I think that the community will have a great, great, um, uh, great time down there. But and they're practicing. I was down there one day. They had like thirty police officers on bikes, like just doing something early in the morning, like a drill, or you know, just getting ready to be ready there. Um, so. I mean, hopefully everything goes good. Okay, so, oh, Patrick, your dad was in the Marine Corps. Well, thank you for his service. And, oh, he was born in Norfolk. Okay. So my um, my dad was born in Portsmouth, and that's why I was down there to visit his, uh, I would say, they were his great uncles, because my, my grandmother was the only child, so her her cousins lived two doors down from him growing up, so, from her growing up, so she, those are like her siblings. So those are like my parents, my dad's at least, my dad's uncles and aunts. So I went to go visit them, but he's from Portsmouth and Portsmouth, unfortunately, it's getting wild out there. Um, it used to be much more of a of a more relaxed community, but now that they're moving people out of downtown, but um, very, very great area, beautiful area. Um, and my, um, you know, you have the Navy there, and then um, my great uncle, who I talked to, he was in the Air Force. So I was talking to him about that. Um, he didn't. He wasn't stationed in Virginia Beach, or I mean, no, uh, Portsmouth. Uh, but he was. Um, you know, he he grew up in in Portsmouth, Virginia. And fun fact: the base is actually in Portsmouth, Virginia. Okay, so you were born in Chicago, and then your your brothers were born in Norfolk. Yeah, the funny thing is the base is in Portsmouth, but because because in Maine there's a Portsmouth naval base there, they call they call it the Norfolk Naval Base. Otherwise, which is weird because the 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 one in, in, that's technically in Portsmouth, but they call it Norfolk, 
That's the largest one in the world, you know, naval base in the world. But because the Portsmouth main one is in, they didn't want to confuse people with the locations. So they named it the Norfolk base, but it's technically in Portsmouth, Virginia, which is a fun fact um, there uh, about that. But that's a little. Uh... Oh, your fiance is in, in Norfolk. OK. Yeah, probably for the Navy. And thank you for her service or her niece, fiance's niece. Sorry, I didn't read that. right. Yeah, thank you for. I always appreciate, um, you know, anyone who serves for the country. Many of my I, I haven't served. But many of my uh, cousins and great uncles and um, great great grandfathers have, have have gone forward and helped them to get me where I am. Their service opened opportunities that would have never been there. But um, yeah, the Navy. I mean, that's everything's there for the Navy. One of my friends from up here in Connecticut, he was down there. Most people, if you're in the Navy, that's one of your options is to go to to the. The, the 757 area code in Norfolk, Ports, Portsmouth. I mean, it's the biggest one in the country. You hear planes every time down there. I mean, sometimes one of the days I thought they were like, it was World War III um, because it's just, you know, you hear them all the time, but there was just a bunch of them whizzing by the beach. Uh, but anyway, that, that's... Um, oh, a month before 9-11. Wow. So he, he got out a month before. Wow. So that would be um august of that wow and yeah, that's good because i know you know with the the, the current post 9 11 era just people with the ptsd that i know will come back um you know one of my classmates who was in iraq and unfortunately took his life i don't know the details around it per se fully um but he was one of my classmates and you know the war got to him because one of my friends dated him um and you know it was a big is it just you know it service is it's nothing i take lightly for anyone i appreciate it whether it's in peacetime whether it's in in what they call peacetime it was called war so i you know i always i never take that for granted oh dancing nancy's kind of, uh, just popped up so anyway virginia that was a disaster i tried to do that i get sidetracked <laughs> easily as you can see um but hey it's a stream man it's for you guys you guys are here appreciate you guys talking and everything but yeah, something in the water, we'll see what happens, but it's it's going to be something you want to take public transit, you want to Uber. I'll be talking about, Dave and Tim are in South Carolina, I think Charleston, um, there, and they're at like a tennis, I believe it's a tennis, it's like a tennis facility, but they, they have it so that they um, put on the floor, they have regular like fold up chairs, not even comfortable chairs, just fold up chairs. And then the, the tennis stands, they have it. Yeah, the Volvo Car Stadium in Charleston is where they're playing. So just a unique show eat for Dave and Tim because it's outdoors and it's not it's not in the summer. It's not at CMAC. You know, most of the times when they do these shows in the spring or the, the, the sometimes it's in the winter and, you know, you have it indoors. But it's a. Um, the Volvo car open is played down there in Charleston, and that's the facility. So a very unique thing that you can look at some photos photos on Instagram. Yeah, very tight seating talking things. I, I saw some photos. I, I saw the live stream too of, of Rab. Rab live streamed a couple of the songs. I saw the opener, so damn lucky. And um, yeah, very, very like the, the actual stadium seating looked very tight. Um, so it'd be interesting. And then the seats, the physical seats on the ground looked very tight. They didn't look like they had a lot of space um there. So just a different setup, but hey, that's where they wanted to play and it's good. Charleston has that. Then Charleston has a festival next weekend with like Umphreys McGee and a bunch of other crazy stuff. I think mean, is it panic? I don't know if panic's going down there, but there's a bunch of those type bands that are going down to Charleston, I believe, next weekend. Should be a great festival. <laughs> so South Carolina's getting it. Um yeah, it looked intimate. I, I, yeah, it looked, in, it, and that's the thing. It's a very close knit tennis facility. It's not like some of the larger ones that can fit twenty thousand. It looked very, very close and intimate. Interesting angles for the people on the side. Um, yeah, and, uh, Patrick, counting down the days to the summer tour. Speaking of that, let's talk about Woodstock. And this is why I'm saying, thank God that Dave. And Tim or Dave Matthews Band or Dave Solo is not going to be um, 
you know, you would thank you for waiting for my stream talking to me. I see that. Uh, but thank God that Dave, any sort of Dave Matthews related act is not at Woodstock. This thing is starting to be fire fest. Now they're not selling tickets, which is, I guess, technically that that's one smart thing. So no one's been, is going to get screwed over just yet unless you book the unrefundable hotel and book the flight. Here's the latest with Woodstock 50. First off, the lineup has disappointed certain people. The lineup's always going to disappoint people. And I think doing it now, 99 was a different era. They were able to get the best of what, literally the best of what's around. Uh, <laughs> Dumps of fire 2019. Right. In 99, it was easier and things weren't as pressured for people to make money off touring. So I think it was easy to get a, get a, a, a 99, you know, back then to get that for, for that anniversary of uh, Woodstock 99. 2019 is different, okay? Because this is something where artists make money off their touring. So they were, yeah, they're trying to be like Coachella and the, they were trying to make it like, oh, Woodstock, you can be right back where it all was. But the problem is now, you look at even Dave and Tim, they, they, I mean, Dave Matthews, man, they listed, you can download, if you bought anything over 40 bucks on the the website last year, you pretty much got to come tomorrow CD for free. If you bought any ticket, you got a download link for come tomorrow. People were sharing their download links because they had seven or eight tickets they bought over a tour season. They were passing them to other fans who, who didn't um, you know, get a ticket or, or maybe have bought through another avenue. Like they bought, they're going to buy last minute on cash or trade. So they didn't have a, a physical ticket master ticket or warehouse ticket. They were giving out download links so everyone could get their copies. They were redeeming their copies and mailing them to people across the country, across the world. It was a great thing of the community, the Matthews Band community. They still didn't go like sell nearly close to what their best album sold. And people make their money off touring. And I think the hardest thing, I, I'm not an expert, but I just think that the, the money, booking the artist and paying the artist is very hard in 2019 versus 2009 or 1999 or 1995 or 1990. There's so much that is put towards uh, artists making their money on tour versus making their money through album sales and, and other stuff, even though the record companies always have made most of the money. But you could make more of a living off of your album sales. Stuff would just go platinum. An album would go platinum like Vanilla, Vanilla, Vanilla Ice off of one song. Now albums don't go platinum, singles go platinum, but a lot of that is streamed and even the streaming money is ate up by the label. So that's why I, I think it's hard. Um, and uh, Talking Tunes says, it doesn't seem like Woodstock, they can call it whatever they want, but the lineup looks like it isn't the spirit. Right, it's not the spirit. You know what the spirit of, of Woodstock is? Lock-in. Lock-in is essentially the spirit of Woodstock. Um, Th that that's really what it is. But I don't want Lockin to be ruined. I want Lockin to stay in Virginia. I don't want them to try to copy Woodstock. I don't want them to expand their their ticket size. And I plan to go there. I may try to go there next year. I'm doing the Gorge this year. I'm doing Lockin either next year or in a couple, hopefully in a couple of years, Lord willing. Um, but it's just there is it, it's just they, they, they're trying to do it bigger. And even Woodstock '99 just. It just, I think it just happened to come together. Um, I, I don't know much about it, but just what they got, looking back at what they got for Woodstock 99, in modern day terms, you couldn't book those same level artists like that. And that's why the Woodstock lineup is what it is. They had to go more pop. They tried to be more inclusive. Hey, we're going to let everyone come in. But anyway, long story short is after all this hoopla, we don't have ticket prices, guys. We do not have ticket prices for Woodstock. 50 or whatever they're calling it. And I was looking on um, live, live for Music or Live for Live Music. And let me just check that. Yeah, I heard that it was crazy. Like, But but they had so many great arts. Yeah, and you had uh, people flashing. It was just huge crowds. And that's what also turns me off about this. Huge crowds. I don't want to stand in a crowd like that. I'm sure it was a fun moment. Back in 99, but in 2019, I'm not trying to do that. Okay. Maybe back in my, you know, my high college days, 
but I'm not trying to stand in the GA crowd to barely see the stage and people be loud around me and I'm paying all this money. But um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it was Encore Break. Okay, there I is, Encore. A Live for Live Music. That's what it is on Twitter. I follow them. I just couldn't remember the word. They had an article that, you know, the promoters are saying, relax, we're going to release the tickets. It's April. We don't even have a ticket price. We don't have a ticket price to say, hmm, can I afford to go to this festival? For all we know, the GA tickets could be $800 or they could be $80. The VIP could be a thousand dollars or it could be ten thousand dollars. <laughs> right, and Patrick, yeah, right? Twelve dollars for water, ten dollars for a slice of pizza, right? That's what I just that's what's I, my fear is. And what they're doing is if you go on to the site, if you go on to the Woodstock 50 website, and I'll just go on there right now. Just, to, just so that I can, I did research, but I'm going to just go on like, a, I've never seen this thing. Hmm, I want to go see Woodstock 50. I'm going to click on the woodstock.com. And what you get is, you know, pictures of the, the old Woodstock and pictures of people outside flashing up in front of you. You see the lineup, the killers, Miley Cyrus, Santana, Lumineers, like, <laughs> huh? I mean, look, I mean. Again, if it was a smaller festival, eh, not not a bad setup. But and you know you got Robert Plant. I mean, hey, you got Robert Plant. They probably taxi to use the bathroom, right? Because then I see you have home lineup. You can find everything about the lineup, the mission and history and merch. You can find the merch. They already have. You can already buy merchandise for an event. If the tickets are not even on sale, folks. The tickets are not even on sale. Save $15 off your first order. You can buy T-shirts. They are trying to cash in on the shirts right now. 30 to 35 bucks for a Woodstock T-shirt. Um, so you can you can pay the... the oh, oh, Greta Van Fleet, the Zeppelin cover band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've heard... I haven't heard much of Greta Van Fleet, but yeah, I've heard... I've seen all the memes and heard people who think they said that, right? The Zeppelin cover. But um, yeah, the Woodstock Cannabis Collection. Oh my gosh, man. Like they're already, and you can look at the mission. You click on tickets, go ahead and look it up. Go click on tickets for Woodstock 50. Put your first name, put your last name, put your birthday, put your email address. Check, opt in to receive emails and updates and offers. And then you subscribe to the marketing platform. That's all you have on the ticketing. Like this is going to be in August. And for festivals, people want to plan in advance. When you don't even have a price point, how am I supposed to take time off work if I don't know if I can afford it? You know, <laughs> you know, I may need to have my insurance company help me pay for the tickets. <laughs> um, like. That's what is, is mind boggling about this is you literally all they're doing is seeing how many people they can get on the email list. And then I think based off of that, they're going to set the ticket price. So they're they're fishing. There's only one Woodstock. And it was free. actually it was like 13 bucks, I think. Right. And it was technically it was like 13 back in that day, it was a little bit of money. But, yeah, it was like 13 or 15. I think you can look at let me look at the price of Woodstock. I've, I've, I've looked it up. Uh, price. Six dollars and fifty cents for one day and eighteen dollars for all three days. Oh my gosh. Eighteen bucks for all three days. That was advanced sale. Um <clears throat> there's actually a thing on, on Syracuse. They probably just showed up, but I mean it was that was the price. But back in those days, shoot, <clears throat> I mean. 18, someone tells me eight bucks back then. That's like if someone says like, um, oh, 1999 was $150, $150 plus service charges. This is an article from Syracuse blog, our uh, local Syracuse thing. 
Yeah, so 650, 18 for all day. 650 per, I mean, that's even for that. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, that's what, it was 150. Yeah, I mean, that, maybe you're right talking to the people just started showing up, and I'm sure they just let them in. Some devil encore night one spot. <laughs> you're walking through the woods with my dog. <laughs> Stumble upon 500,000. <laughs> That's pretty funny, Patrick. Yeah, like I'm sure someone was just chilling, a nice nature walk, you know, they're orienteering, just, you know, right, you know, making, creating a map of topography. And all of a sudden they see like 500,000 people. Oh, there's Jefferson Airplane. Oh, there's Jimi Hendrix. Oh, huh? hey, hey, we're going to take a break. I'm just going to take the, the night off and go come up. And I'm sure like you could hear the music from outside of it. Right. The record record store day reissue was more than the, the actual <laughs> festival. Right. And they <laughs> nostalgia. I think one of the tickets went on. I think on eBay, they said it went for like 200. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, $255 someone paid on eBay for an original Woodstock 69 ticket. Um there, that was just on the article. But um yeah, so that's my thing is look, you don't even know the prices. They're fishing for as many people as they're going to get. This has a semi-fire festival written on it. All we need to find is Ja Rule is hosting this festival. We need to see like the next promo video is Ja Rule. Hey, it's your boy, it's murder. And you just see him, holla, holla. All right, I'm getting into this, guys. This is legit. I swear. I swear. It's not in the Bahamas. We got real tense. No, I sound like DMX now. <laughs> I, think. I can't do that uh, impersonation. But I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> I wonder what Ja is thinking. We need to go to Ja at a moment like this. Maybe he can save this festival. But it's concerning when the price point isn't out. So that means all these people signed up and, you know, I'm sure a lot of them will buy the tickets. I'm sure brokers are going to buy tickets, but it's like, how do we not know the price point? That's what's concerning about this. It's it's a big thing that is shocking to me. Answer the air. Uh, 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 I can't do that uh, there, but that's all I'm going to say about Woodside. I, I'm, I could beat a dead horse about, about that, but uh, Woodside 50 concerns me. Next up, I want to talk about some. We're we're getting into this this new. Uh, <laughs> we're getting this into this new territory with Ticketmaster trying to be scalping. Ticketmaster this week on Ticketmaster plays scalping. Scalper, we're going to look at some things here. There are varying prices, and even things have changed since I pointed it out on social media. Very interesting. Maybe people bought the tickets up. Maybe brokers were had seen this. Or maybe people were buying tickets because they saw that they were still on sale. I posted on DMV Family and on my page on Twitter, ConcertBiz34. I posted that there were a lot of there were pit tickets still left for Pensacola, Florida, the first full band show of the tour, and that's going to be coming up next month. Ninety-one dollars was the going price of of tickets plus fees. This was earlier this week. You could buy a pit ticket for $91. Here's what's crazy about this in Ticketmaster's fluctuating price points. And this is why Ticketmaster tries not to allow for their resale market to have tickets that much below face value. If you went on the warehouse and tried to get tickets for Pensacola for the pit, you wanted to get the best possible seats, non-premium seats, and you requested a pit, you put for $115 plus fees, right? You, if you got confirmed, you bought a ticket for $115 plus freeze and shipping, and you got that ticket, right? Someone could have went this week and purchased a ticket for 91 bucks. Yes, it's not a warehouse ticket. Yes, it doesn't have the cool, you know, design that they're going to have on the ticket, but you're in the freaking pit for 91 bucks. Now, that's still a lot of money. I, I think the pit should be cheaper, but I mean, obviously, it's supply and demand, and everyone wants to be in the pit and DMB and the fan base. People, claw and fight over these tickets. So, you know, that's a good price for 2019 for DMB Pit. 
I don't care what show it is. I don't care where they're playing. So you were better off waiting it out than buying through the warehouse and even getting confirmed. And the warehouse doesn't guarantee you pit tickets. There were people that requested for Idaho. There were people that requested for Pensacola and Jacksonville. And, and guess what? They didn't. Um, oh, we got some devil to save me. So he, Encore one and two, some devil to save me uh, to start off the, the Encore. People, people were denied or got upper level seats. So they got bad $115 seats. And um, so 91 bucks, that means if you waited it out, it actually works. And that's why I say if you're in a southern market like Pensacola, Florida, do not put your warehouse request for that show. For Jacksonville, Florida, for any Alabama show, no disrespect to Alabama, do not put in a warehouse request. Go on the on sale, see what it is, or even just wait it out because the tickets are going to be very cheap for these shows closer to event date. Uh, Patrick says for Bristol, $180 a piece per ticket. I mean, that's what I mean. There's variable price points for these pit tickets. Some of them are 200, 300 bucks for the pit uh, for some of these shows. Some of them are even higher than that, where it's a platinum seat. They're calling it platinum seats where you're standing, but they're platinum. Okay. It's a platinum ticket. Uh, so Pensacola, 102. And this, this is a verified resale pair. So someone is reselling these tickets. Um, that bought them and they may have even bought those $91 tickets and are trying to flip it for a little bit of cash. So that's Pensacola. Talking tunes, warehouse or West Palm Beach in Tampa got pavilion in the back. I didn't look at what resale is going on those yet. Right. And West Palm Beach is um, just one of the popping shows down south. Um, to me, night one and night two, they're always hard to get. Uh, tickets there. So, I mean, who knows what that is going at? We'll look at that as the tour goes on. We're going to look at more stops as they come up to see what's going on closer to the event. And But honestly, a pavilion seat now, give me a pavilion seat and I'm happy at a DMB show. Sure, I'd love to be closer. I would. But anything non-lawn, outside the gorge, I'm going to sit on the lawn for either two or three of the days. But Give me a pavilion seat in the back. I'm happy. That's why I, how I saw Farm Aid. Um, that's how I saw a, a lot of my the DMB shows I've been to recently have been in the mid pavilion or upper pavilion. I really haven't been back down low in a minute. So I just like being able to see the stage with elevation, see the see everything that's going on. I don't like the lawn just because of you can't see the stage physically on certain venues like Hartford if you're not at a certain spot. And it can be very, very far away. I like being elevated. I'd rather be in the upper deck of an arena than on the lawn uh, for, Hart uh, for for Hartford or some of the other Northeast lawns. Just get me in the pavilion. However you got to get me in. I don't care if I'm at the side either. Um, just get me into the pavilion uh, there. So that's Pensacola. Jacksonville is another show down the line. And here's what's crazy, too. 102 row Q. So if you look up Jacksonville, if you guys have your computers out, turn, turn your computers to, to Ticketmaster.com, Jacksonville, Dave Matthews, man. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> but um, I was looking at section 102. 102 is the, sh is the section that's like, it's not side stage, but it's like one of the sections just to the right of, of where you would technically be in a side view. So you can see the full stage is really close. It's the closest section to the stage where you can see the full view. 102 Row Q in Jacksonville is $92.34 plus fees for a pair. Not resell, Ticketmaster. And again, just showing you Ticketmaster has to fluctuate these prices to get them to sell. These tickets still haven't sold. So if you're looking for a show, you got them there. Ants marching. So some devil saved me ants marching for Encore of Dave and Tim right now. Um, but uh, going back to that, uh, you're, you're getting seats that are valued at, if you got these same seats for Jacksonville and the lower level for any fall tour, you will probably pay $115 plus fees, if not more, if they didn't platinum seat them. Uh, so 92 bucks, 34 cents, not bad to be right next to the stage. You have elevation in row queue. 
So you're not really close in that section, but you're high, it's lower level. And it's a very small auditorium. I think Jacksonville, but I think it's Veteran Memorial, Memorial Coliseum, whatever it's called out there, 9234 for Jacksonville. And then Nashville is interesting. I saw a lot of side view seats that were open close after the on sale. And I thought that Nashville was not being sold as much as I, I thought it would be. But I stand corrected. Someone pointed me back to the website for Ticketmaster. And I saw that a lot of stuff has been scooped up. So Nashville is going to be popping. But here's the thing. Nashville still has a lot of upper level seats. You can get upper level seats closer to the stage, still full view of the stage, not side, almost side stage. Um, you can get those seats for $75 for upper, uh, or no, $80 and 50 cents for, for Nashville. It was $85 for any, the cheapest tickets for the, for most, 99.9% uh, .9 of the fall tour was 85 bucks. So Nashville offers $80. You save, you save about $5 or so from what, what the cheapest get-ins were for, for the fall tour in arena. So that's it. there's still some tickets left. Now they aren't the best seats in the world, but they're still there. If you want to go to Nashville, you got those. Uh, you can scoop them up now. And the other thing is, there's some singles at the if this is if the stage is here, right? And this is the arena, the basketball court, and the upper level is here, right? This kind of upper level section looking dead on at the stage. I kind of sat there for Mohegan, but I was at the corner. Like this looking dead on. At the long basketball court side, or it's going to be a hockey rink uh, distance in Nashville because they got the Predators there. Looking directly at the stage, those upper level back seats are forty five bucks. That's pretty cheap for na anything in Nashville. That's pretty cheap. So get ins are forty five bucks plus plus fees. Um, but again, there's some singles that are lurking there, and you got some resale tickets flooding that um, there. Birmingham, Alabama, Sweet Home, Alabama. Um, again, $85 is the get-in price for a lot of the, the bulk of the East Coast for a pavilion. Non-pit pavilion, $85 is the get-in. Um, there's some exceptions. But $75 for uppers in Birmingham, Alabama. Can't beat that. that that's for get-ins, and there's tons of seats still left. $85 for mid-level seats. Mid-level pavilions for $85, bucks, that's a steal if you're paying face value. They have done some things in Hartford now where in, in Mansfield and some of the other shows, and I know they've done it for SPAC, and uh, I'm sure they do it for Deer Creek. Some of the mid-level and upper-level pavilion seats are 115 bucks. Yeah, they're selling seats that are considered uppers at 115 bucks. You did 100 row O. Oh, you paid for 409. Oh, oh, that's that's a lot. But I mean, hey, it's, it's Hartford. Um, so you paid face for those. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Hartford, and that, those are the platinum seats. When I'm talking the, the face value warehouse pricing, some of the Hartford mid pavilion, upper pavilion are $115. Some of them are $85 at the back corners. But in Mansfield, their upper level is everything in the under the pavilion, which is like a mid level anyway, an upper pavilion. What's considered what I consider upper in Mansfield, some of that stuff is 115 bucks plus fees. So they're wild win on these prices. But for, for Birmingham, Alabama, $85 gets you mid level. Now, here's where Birmingham gets crazy platinum seats for lower levels, 101 row F, 599 per ticket. That's crazy. But they know that the lowers have been really scooped up by people there. So they know that if you want something, you're going to pay a lot. Um, I like, and I know I saw those tickets like where you got Ryan. I personally just, to me, it's not worth it to pay that. But hey, that's what you, you know, it's, it's really what you, it's what you're willing to pay. And what I tell my my southern folks is, wait it out. Even in the East Coast, wait it out. There was so many. I could not sell my single ticket. So my friend, I was gonna go by myself. My friend got a pair of of pavilion seats for. I had open air seats, a uh, single open air seat. I was going to go by myself and then meet my friends who had other seats. My boy Pete finds tickets to, to the pavilion inside last minute at a good deal. So I'm like, let me just sell my single. I could not get rid of my single open air seat. So even Mansfield, the Friday night show in Mansfield, 
there's going to be seats that you can buy for face closer to event time. Hartford, I don't know. Hartford is very hard. Last year was a disaster. Price rise. I tried to wait it out and I took an L. Um, I bought upper level seats for about 130, 140 plus fees. I think it, I can't remember what it was. It was just under 200 bucks, but I got an aisle seat in the upper pavilion. But if you're in, if you're in a, a small, lesser demand, one of his tickets for 200 in DC, row five, six seats dead center. Okay, so you went to that DC show, 200. Okay, row five, six. Okay, but and that that winter tour, there was tons of seats on StubHub uppers, not the not the dead center like you had row six, row five, six of those seats. That's a pretty good spot, and it's probably you weren't getting good deals. But I really think if you're in Birmingham, if you're in Jacksonville, even Nashville, and I definitely think Pensacola, wait it out on cash or trade, and even. I, I'm really trying to, and I shout out to Cash or Trade because I, I saw the, a video of an interview that the, one of the founders did of it on another YouTube personalities page. Great site to find tickets, and they saved like fifty thousand tickets. I think they said or fifty thousand dollars or whatever. They they saved thousands of dot of tickets per night of the Baker's Dozen for Fish. Cash or Trade diverted about fifty thousand tickets for that. They said I think I believe. 50,000 of the, the baker's dozen tickets were sold on cash or trade or something like that. An amazing stat. I probably got it wrong. But anyway, the point is they are doing things to get people to pay face. But with some of these shows for, for DMB in the South, you can do better than face. You can do much better than face. Demand that when you're buying tickets from people, cash or trade, warehouse forms, counter them. Do not settle for face value because the face value is not fair for these seats. They may have bought platinum tickets and paid 150 or 200 bucks, but if you want, if they want to sell their tickets, they better give them to you at the face value mark or below face value if the demand is there. Pull up StubHub.com, pull up Seek. You can say, look, this is what they're selling tickets for on here. Your seats are right a set, a one row better. I'm gonna buy on here, or if I want to give you a fan, I know a great person. You're, you've been on cash or trade or been on the warehouse boards for a minute. You want me to buy your ticket. You got to lower your ticket price. We have buyers have to demand more than just face. Um, yeah, Patrick. Yeah. Waiting it out is always the best. There's exceptions. Certain stuff. I look at SPAC night one or night two. Uh, it's my boy, John Dix. I don't know if you're on, but shout out to John Dix. Great, great guy who really I've had some great conversations with him. Look forward to seeing him at the Gorge. You know, he bought a ticket to spec on the secondary. And I said, I looked at the price and I told him, that's a steal. Buy the ticket right now. Balcony seat, like really ball in the seat. Buy it. Don't ask questions. I don't care what the prices go. If they drop below that, unicorns will come out um, from the earth. You know, SPAC, yeah, SPAC is worth taking an L if you get a certain ticket price and it's from a reputable source. So that's the thing. But most of the stuff waited out in demand because people are like, oh, you should you should buy face value tickets. Yes. But in cash or trade, they better have something else with that ticket, a beer, a voucher. You know, you can do all sorts of stuff on cash or trade. Some people have like uh, the, the owner of it said they someone put a timeshare up for tickets. They gave someone a timeshare for tickets to a show like a, a night or two at a timeshare. <laughs> but um. They better give you something more than just face value for some of these shows. Because when you look at StubHub, it's already below face value. When you look at just, if I pull up StubHub right now and check out Pensacola, Florida, um, I'm going to I'm gonna see stuff that's below face value. So that's the thing is demand as a buyer. Do not be afraid of demand respect. And as a seller, you may need to lower your standards. You may, if you have a ticket and you're trying to get rid of it, you, you're, you asking just face for this era of Dave Matthews bands may not be sufficient enough. It, it may not. Uh, Pensacola, Florida tickets start at 25 on Starbucks, 24 bucks for 204 row in lower level seats, 90 bucks uh, for 130 row M. And this is just stuff. This is not cash or trade 74 bucks for seats, right? Um, 117 row L. Um, 101, 
dead like center court at a basketball game. Um, and you're, you're perfect balance between the mix and the stage. 101 row M, $86.50. Right now, this isn't even, we're not even talking, but we're not even talking that this, this is April 30th. It's, eight, it's 10 days out. Uh, row P, 102 row P, 77.39 plus fees. I mean, these seats that I'm all going over in the lower level, they're, they're, they were selling for 115 bucks or 100 bucks a piece. And stuff up has it below face value. 109 row Q looking dead on from behind the mix, 80 bucks. 108 row J, 108 row J, um, 73 bucks for a pair. So, I mean, I think people need to, there's going to be feast or famine with this tour, but also there, for some reason, stuff pops up so much right before the show, even for this Dave and Tim show. It wasn't nothing for a while. All of a sudden, people, and people also grab tickets and then they want to sell theirs. Like they just had, they want an opportunity, opportunity knock to see a really low price and they want to sell their uppers. So tickets will come up. Um, yeah, tickets start at 25. Now these are, those are upper level seats, but still 25 bucks compared to, again, get in for some of these, <laughs> get ins for some of these fall tour shows was 85 bucks. The night before, for that pre-Super Bowl show, and it was 85 bucks for the cheapest ticket you could buy for face value, like for face value. Um, you know what I mean? So the arenas since the night before in, in 2018, get-ins have pretty much been 85 bucks. Exceptions, of course. And now with the variable ticket master pricing, they've lowered their standards. <laughs> yeah, Patrick, I can see your comment. 25, holy smokes. Yeah, like you can get into these. And I'll talk about it more in another video because we're at an hour and six right now. Appreciate you guys talking with me today. Um, it's just, again, one of the things that fans should think about is just going, planning a vacation, take off time in April or May, take off a week or what have you, and just whatever show they have for DMB in May, you know, pick a week in mid-May to just take off from work. Go drive there, go fly there. And because they start in the South every year. Or if you have flexibility, once the tour is announced, take off a week, take off a weekend. You can take off a weekend is a lot more feasible. Take off a weekend, go to Pensacola, go to Jacksonville, take off a random Tuesday. Sometimes with certain jobs, you can take off like three days off and during the weekday because you know people aren't taking time off until Friday. Take a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and go to a middle of the, the uh, go to an Alabama or Arkansas. They are not doing Arkansas this year, I don't believe. No, they're not. But go to Arkansas, go to Des Moines, Iowa, guys. Do something where you can travel to a beautiful location you may have not been. Get a ticket for DMV right before the show when it's mad cheap. Ne it's never failed. Austin has had tickets below face value on StubHub the week before the show. Like pretty much every year they had it at Austin. Now, Dallas and Houston, you know, those Woodlands is really Houston. Uh, Dallas, Jackson Energy Pavilion for Dallas, Fort Worth folks. Those can be pricier because they have a little larger of a, of, a, of, a, of a city center. And they also have transplants from Dallas and Houston because there's tons of jobs there. They get people from other parts of the country. So those are hard tickets. But other sh southern shows, Pensacola, Jacksonville, you're going to get a really, really good deal. Um, same thing when they get to Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, anything for DMV, Alabama, Mississippi, Mississippi Ar Arkansas, you're going to get a really, really stellar deal right before the show. So wait it out, folks. Wait it out. Wait it out. Um, but that's all I got for today. Thank you guys for talking. Um, I get sidetracked, but I appreciate your comments. Um, yeah. And that's the thing, Pat. And I know it's tough. Yeah. Living paycheck to paycheck. And even with me, I, I'm blessed to have certain concert money. But this gorge, this gorge trip, man, it's, it's going to take a lot of other shows I want to see. But I, I honestly think. I, with with stuff like that, with people like there's nothing like a moment on a concert. But one of the things I've done is some of these concerts, I'm just passing on. The fear of missing out is not going to get to me in some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to the Gorge this year. And then after that, with DNB, I'm probably going to just stay local or I'm going to go try to go down south. Um, it's this band and, and certain artists that are raising their ticket prices, unless it's their Elton John farewell tour. It is not worth paying 100, 200, 300 bucks. You're going to be disappointed. 
when you try to chase DMV, you will always lose. Unless you're going, unless the shows you're chasing are SPAC night one and night two, Alpine night one and night two, and um, the Gorge three nights in a row. If you're chasing any other middle of the week shows, you're not going to be happy. You're going to be DNB'd out by one of those shows. What do you think about Tiger Woods, Ryan? Um, I think that Tiger Woods is an inspiration to everyone. And it's one of the few things that's united this pretty much most of the country. Um, I think that Tiger Woods, for someone who, who me, like I like certain niche sports, like hockey. I grew up playing hockey. But golf, to me, is boring to watch on TV. I've, I started watching golf when Tiger would get into a Sunday race. Even, after, even when Tiger left, the impact of Tiger um, of coming into the game with energy and dominance, when Tiger had his back surgeries, I would pop into a British Open for the last hour of coverage um, just because of what I saw when I saw Tiger. So like Rory and Fowler and all those. I don't know. You know I, I'm not a huge golf guy um, per se. But um, I just remember I, I will watch on a Sunday uh, for a U.S. Open or a Masters for the last hour. I don't watch the entire Sunday. If it's nice out in Connecticut, look, our our summers are short and sweet for certain. So I'm climbing on two by two to the beach, to the to the jogging trails, to the, the city park uh, out there in Hartford, uh, Riverside Park or another park out there, a couple other parks out there in the Hartford area. I'm going there. I am not going to to watch golf all day because we don't get many, you know, we have a limited summertime here in Connecticut. But I think that what he did is he changed the game. And Tiger is now he messed up, yo. He was on, uh, but someone said this, this is what's funny about Tiger. Someone said, what superstar athlete of their sport hasn't had more than one woman at the same time? <laughs> I mean, that's horrible, but it's true. Like, what well, I mean, Michael Jordan was balling, Wilt Chamberlain was balling. You know, Babe Ruth, I'm sure he has some side chicks. Uh, but anyway, I just think what he did was amazing to go through the pain. I mean, I don't get emotional with sports, but seeing him hug his son um, and just remembering what his father, you know, the hug of his father, like, I, it was pretty. My eye was a, was dry, but it almost got a little wet. Like, it almost had a tear falling down. Like, I just thought it was amazing to see that. I saw the last 20, 25 minutes. But I go, I'm pretty much or checking social media if it's really close. If Tiger's in the mix or if there's a really close near playoff type of thing, I watch. And that's because of Tiger. So shout out to Tiger. Um, and again, people, we're so quick to criticize in this world the opposite thing. So certain people who are liberal, they'll criticize everything about a conservative politician that they do wrong. Uh, people who are conservative will, will be checking the itinerary of Hillary Clinton in like, or this person or that person, and the only post the wrongdoings of someone else. We all are human. We all should should understand that people make mistakes, and we should give people second chances. Now, third and fourth chances, mad depends. But when Tiger Woods he messed up, okay, he 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 um you know he took responsibility. Now he had issues with drugs. You know, I don't know. That's still a question mark. Because, you know, maybe he didn't mix the stuff right. Who knows? But he made mistakes. He had back surgeries and pain. People ruled him out and he overcame odds. And even the people who root against Tiger make it that much entertaining. You have people rooting for him, rooting against him, but it gets people tuned in. And I know it's, oh, you should like golf or this or that. No, no, no. It's storylines are what drive sports. The Magic and Bird thing drove sports. The Michael Jordan and, and Dennis Rodman's and Scotty Pippen thing drove sports. The Wayne Gretzky going to LA drove sports. By the way, fun fact, guess who he was babysitting when when Wayne Gretzky found out he was got he got traded to the LA Kings, he was babysitting Robin Thick because him and Alan Thick lived in the same neighborhood um, at the time. He was babysitting Robin Thick, <laughs> little Robin Thick, he's a teenager, he's like 13 or 14. He was babysitting Robin Thicke when he found out he was traded from the Oilers to the Kings. Fun fact there. Um, but I think that a, as a human race, uh, you, you know, we have to do better with um, just being happy, having moments where we're all like in unison on something. And Tiger Woods was that thing. I mean, everyone was happy. And even there were some haters, but even they were like, hey, no, yeah, Tiger did it. Congratulations. I thought it was a really dope thing uh, there. And um, 
Yeah, that's all I got. Any other cons any other questions? Uh, any other thoughts? Otherwise, it's ten thirty Eastern time. I'm gonna get off, but um, yeah, I just, I'm excited with what DMB is gonna do. Um, and Dave and Tim show seem pretty cool. There's definitely been better. Sh looking at just the sets, um, there's definitely been better shows. On this one, a Some Devil Save Me, Ants Marching Encore, 24 songs. Um, so we compare that to. <clears throat> let me see. So, like Dave and Tim, I did Saratoga Night One uh, in 2017. Eh, about, yeah, so it's about the same. There were 23. Um, oh, this show's on. Oh, this is this is twenty. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, let's see. Oh, 2013. Oh, 28. So only 24 songs played tonight. When I went to Spag Night One, uh, June 16, 2017, um, there was um, 28. And um, like the thing about that show, like now this is Spag, and this was like, but I mean. Like, for instance, they started off with the stone. Boom. You know, you had hard with the stone. They had a some devil cornbread grace you. So, yeah, the encores are different with, with Dave and Tim because it's hard to know what to play. But this, I mean, this show was was pretty, pretty solid, I would say. But it wasn't like, it wasn't like, there's definitely been better Dave and Tim shows. So, it goes. But, yeah, you have a, you have a two-step. And oh, I think uh, Ryan's the son about two step finally. Yeah, they played two step a lot with Dave and Tim, even more than the regular band. Um, and I think two step's a great song. Um, so, you know, that's something that's been heavy with Dave and Tim, even though it's been limited with the full band. I don't know how I feel about two step as far as it being now, it's more of a rarity. Um, I, I mean, and also, too, a lot of the tours 2013, 2014, it just happened to be played in the shows I was going to East Coast. Got a lot of two step love, even when other parts of the country weren't. So, like I've heard two step, I heard two step last year. They they played it for um. They played it for the SPAC show I went to, and then I heard it in twenty. Did I hear it sixteen? I got hit heard it in twenty sixteen. I can't remember if I did or not. But it's not something like it's not like I'd rather have JTR. But and yeah, people people aren't. The thing is, people are chasing it to hear it again. I mean, most people have heard Two Step, but people are like, play Two Step, play Two Step. And I'm like, no, no, no. If you're going to yell out a song, don't say Two Step. It's an amazing song. Beautiful. It's one of the pit, the, the, the DMB like cornerstones. But you should be chanting other stuff. You should be chasing other stuff. But this show started off, you know, you had a BOA second spot. I'm so damn lucky to BOA. That's a pretty solid thing. And... um. You have a stay or leave. Virginia in the rain is really a, a great gym and a two step. But and Trip Trip and Billy's is good too. Um, it's different for I think full band. It's a different thing. Oh, you never know. That that's a dope song um, that I heard. Um, 2014 night two of Hartford. Out of nowhere, that was a big. That's what's dope. When it's a surprise like that, that's what I think is 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 what I I missed from. From the summer tour, especially here in Hartford, we only have one show now. But um, yeah, beautiful message, great song. Um, but that like a moment like that when you never know came when I was like, what? Girl behind us in the pit was calling for that in Columbus. It was her seventy third show. Wow. Oh, calling for two step. Oh, her seventy. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah. <laughs> like seventy third show. That means you, unless you just were touring a lot in the last 10 years, that means you probably, 73 shows, you probably saw it a bunch of times when it was played almost every other night. But when people have their, whatever, people, you know, you can't judge, people are going to have their different opinions. Yeah, that, that, oh, that Columbus show was amazing. Didn't you guys have Break Free or Break, was it Break For It or Break Free? You guys had one of those. Um, and Patrick says, those are the cringy d and fans, right? Yeah. When you're chanting for don't drink the water or two-step, like, no, 
No, you don't go to a show like, and I understand 41. I love, I listen to 41 500 times. The reason being the jam is smooth and it has groove. <laughs> I said, it's probably going to be stay and she got angry. I, said, no. <laughs> I know you have to be realistic. Like that's the thing is fans aren't realistic. Like they're not playing people, people. Okay. They're not playing Exodus, okay? Unless Ziggy Marley comes on. Oh, you have Break Free? Yeah. That was the thing. And, and honestly, that Columbus show have made it great from afar. I wasn't there. But when you saw those on a set list, and I'm coming to Mohegan Sun to, for their show, you know, looking at that Columbus set, I'm like, hey, yeah, Ryan, I agree. Don't drink the water. Don't want to hear it again. And I've said a million times, it was better when it was slow, when you had more of a piano presence, but he can do that. And you don't have Tim playing the loud harmonics. The loud harmonics on that is just, oh, it ruins it. Don't Drink the Water is a campfire song. It's meaning you can listen to an acoustic song, pitch black in the woods at a campfire, and it's more eerie than just being loud to be loud. Don't Drink the Water should be slower and more acoustic driven and build up maybe a little bit because Roy sometimes we get a little hard on his sax at the beginning, but it should build up to the fact that we're taking your land. It shouldn't be at the beginning, yeah, we're taking your land, mother, you know, whatever. Like it should be, hey, hey, how you doing here? We're gonna take your land. I mean, they're not even how you doing here. You know, step aside. We need to look at your land. We're gonna inspect it. And then by the end, it's yeah, we took your land. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> Manifest destiny, suckers. You know, like, it, it, that's where we're going. But, um, I'm part Cherokee, by the way, too. A fun fact, too. Like, very, very, my, my great grandma um, was, um... <laughs> you sound like, yeah, the western part of Maryland. <laughs> yeah, they, you guys have that Appalachia, West Virginia accent. And uh, from doing insurance, I hear all the accents from across the, the, the country there. Um, but, but like that's the thing is like it, it anyway um yeah that that um that show in uh where was it yeah in columbus it gave hope for everyone and yeah the break free and you never know oh people think you're british oh my god it's in syracuse well there's no lake view the lake is not being viewed by dmv this year um oh, oh you talk about you just go to Syracuse in general. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I haven't been out to upstate. I haven't been the first upstate I've been is actually I think West Point. Oh no no. Saratoga Springs, Texas, because that's yeah, that's more upstate. Upstate is just a, anything outside of New York City, no. <laughs> you know, once you pass Yonkers, oh yeah, you had Kill the King, right. And we had Kill the King and Mohegan Sun. And and that's the thing is that show set the blueprint. Okay, maybe you're, you're, you're going to get from here on out. The Boston show was horrible. My friend was there, too. Um, my boy, Pete. But the Boston show was just like, yeah, cringeworthy. But everything else, and even they messed up. Like, I heard the, the audio was messed up during Watch Tower um, when my friend was pissed because uh, it was just like he couldn't hear any. Like, it was just certain things cut out, I guess, with the, the parts. Yeah. The stone, we had stone. So this it was say goodbye into the stone. That was probably one of the best things I've ever experienced at a show. Again, only going to shows since 2012. But say goodbye into the stone just was a one-two punch. But that's the thing is like, I just said, if we get Kill the King, if we get, I just need one of these. Kill the King, Break Free, you never know. Like, give me one of those and I'm good. And we got Kill the King at, at Mohegan. Then we got Say Goodbye. Was, say Goodbye was getting handed out that tour. Um, a lot more than and then recent memory, and you had some forty ones and say goodbyes. Um, looking at some of the older shows where forty one and say goodbye were played consecutively. Um, so I I had them on my phone too. Um, I've I've been downloading and purchasing some recent some older live tracks that I had streamed for a lot much, but I'm listening to them on my runs. So like for instance, um. Not that one. The Hartford Live Tracks 47. 
yeah, you guys got sick of buying Columbus, right? So you guys got certain things. That show was just amazing because you said, just pick, give me two of the songs, the highlight songs from Columbus, and I'm happy. And sure enough, we got Say Goodbye and Kill the King, and then we got the song, like, you know what I mean? Like, just give us two of those songs. You can play whatever you want. Play a 15-minute Mercy. Play Don't Drink the Water. Play You and Me, and then do a You and Me replies into a fake, into Mercy again. Just give me two of those. And like, for instance, Live Tracks 47, they played 41 to Leave Me Praying, which is the beginning, like the Don't Drink the Water OG, and then Say Goodbye. And then what was, I think it was Virginia. I think it was one of the Virginia Beach or the the classic amphitheater. Let me see if I can find that. At the time it was called that. I don't see, I think I deleted it from... That's the one I have streamed. I don't actually own that one. But the, there's been 41 to say goodbye. Uh, yes, um, talking tunes. Nugs added live tracks volumes 1 through 19. Um, and that's something we'll talk about more towards tour time. Are they going to are they going to add live show purchases to Nugs? And that that nugs that nugs um one through nineteen package that was sold to to iTunes because I have our Apple Music I have Apple Music and they have the one through nineteen on there. Spotify got that deal cut. And the one thing and this is why part of the reason I I bought Apple Music about two years ago three years ago. Um, and the reason I did is because of the live tracks being standard for Apple Music one through nineteen. For streaming, they were the first ones to get a deal. Apple put up the bread for those those i for the the live tracks, um, and then then it got to Spotify, and now we have it to Nugs. Uh, Ryan says forty seven and forty live tracks is the best. Um, yeah, Apple Music was ahead of the game because even with DMB Radio. All these people are like, yo, this is dope. This is awesome. And the live recordings were awesome. And we'll talk about that in a second. That's what I forgot to talk about uh, talking to you. But um, it was dope to have Apple Music was ahead of the curve because I'm like, look, all these DMB radio playlists, I could just put pick five live tracks from 1 through 19, put them on a playlist and put the playlist on random, and I'd have a better mix than what the DMB radio was having. So they were ahead of the curve. Apple Music got that deal. Yeah, live tracks two. One, two, and three are fire. Uh, one, Worcester. Two is Golden Gate. <clears throat> that 04, that, I mean, with Santana, um, you know, and Sugar Will, Joyride. The Jimmy thing from that is awesome because it's, it's like 41 has a little bit of a, a pep in its step. The, it has like a little thing at the beginning. It's a little faster. Um, there's a sugar will joyride, like yo, live tracks two is awesome. Live tracks three in Hartford, just amazing as well. The seek up, the JTR, the busted stuff, the um, the gray street, All right? So, uh, some just really, really dope stuff. But, um, speaking of that, talking to us, you were talking about the raw sounds of live of the, the DMV live downloads. That's what I want from this band. Now, the live tracks, I still will buy them. Don't get me wrong. I still will purchase certain ones. I skip certain other ones. Uh, I just don't think it's worth the money. But I will buy them. But I love how, like you said, it has a live feel. It's not altered. One of the reasons I knock the live tracks from Fenway so much is they pumped in artificial crowd noise to that recording. And it was also recorded at a ballpark. Great set. Great set. The live tracks from Fenway. Great set. I can't stand that live tracks because it's so artificial. It's not authentic because it doesn't have that feel like you're there. Now you may have went to the show and you're flashing back to that show, but I just I, I love how the download that you got for Seville Night One feels like you're at the show. Now I wasn't there. I know you were talking tunes, and you can you said that it made you feel like you're at the show. So you're there. You're a great source because you were there. So that's what I, I love that about the live the, the live release in the DMB radio. Same thing. There's no editing at all. 
I'm listening to a stream, chilling in this same spot right here with my speakers turned up, the window up, beautiful summer night. And yes, it's a better feel um, when you have that live recording. And that's why the Nugs, with Nugs, they give you that soundboard rip fresh off. You know, sometimes it takes a couple of days. Umphreys McGee, I, I brought a couple of the recordings I've been to, and it takes a couple of days. And I remember all my brothers being the poster behind me, the show I went to October 21st, 2014, waiting for the CD to be burnt at the beacon at the soundboard. They're passing out CDs. I give them my slip already a pre-purchase. And that that is the best sound you can get. But DMB, I, I think what they some of the stuff too is some of these shows when Boyd was there, they didn't want to have to have the mistakes so prevalent. And they can modify and edit stuff now. That's what they, they love putting the makeup on these live tracks. And DMB in general, they're, one of their biggest kind of fears is they don't like to be vulnerable. Some of the best vulnerable music they played a couple of times, I Dream So Well, and they scrap it. They scrap the Batson sessions. And some of that stuff was amazing. The bartender, yeah. Buddy Strong, bartender. It, everyone's seen it. But I'm glad that everyone saw it. because. You experienced it talking to him. I was fortunate enough to get. Now, that bartender was the best one all year. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. And I don't have to even be there. That was the best one all year, the one in Seville night one. But I was I was at the one in SPAC. I heard the, the, the live stream, I think, or recording. I can't remember what it was. I heard the one in West Palm Beach, I think it was, last year, and the Chariots of Fire. Dun, 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 dun. I got to know it, too. But, yeah, like, that was all year. Um, so I'm glad people see that. And look, we can't, the debate about the violin, we can't debate that. It's, they're not adding it. That's their choice. They're not adding it. That is the DMB's choice. At this point, we just, we, we have to assume, but what Buddy is bringing is, is shown in that. Um, but again, the live vulnerable DMB is the best DMB. I mean, they've left so many things on the cutting board that were amazing. The best gray streets are the ones like the one in Hartford for Live Tracks 3, where he's kind of making up stuff as he goes. Um, the band being vulnerable is what really just, it, it, it's something that I love. Yeah, the West Palm Beach serious streams. I think that was the one with Bartender. But yeah, they were just great. And then the, the um, Fiddler's Green, the Colorado one. Spack, I mean, uh, Gorge was awesome too, but the Colorado one had uh, time of the season on it. Like, oh, that thing was dope. Uh, and I think I got a. Uh, if you guys look on, uh, if you, Chad Dizzy, he's in the uh, Ants Marching community. He has um, recordings of those. Chad Dizzy, go to Ants Marching Forums, and he has a lot of that stuff archived um, there so you can listen to it. But yeah, those Sirius XM streams. I bought, like, I extended my trial uh, for SiriusXM just because, like, I had canceled it, and I, I got a streaming package just for my phone and my laptop just so I can listen to those live recordings, man. Like, that was dope to hear Captain, SPAC Night One, and Time Bomb, and, you know, even other stuff. Like, that was worth the, the, the purchase of just getting the live stuff. I hope Nugs does something with DMB this summer. You don't have Boyd. So Boyd is the wild card. That's something that you have to put into why they wouldn't release live stuff. Boyd was Katy Perry hot and cold with his violin solos. Now the band is more cohesive, for better or for worse. The one concern about the band is, um, yeah, Pearl Jam does that, and they have their little run. Zach Brown does it. Um, Fish was doing it. Like, Fish has, like, they were doing some of their, like, I, I believe some of their live stuff. Um, you have certain festivals, like Lock End are on there. You have it because your fiance hates commercials. Tom Petty Radio. Yeah, I've heard Tom Petty Radio when I was had my um, packages. Um, oh, Ryan O'Connor. Yeah, Wetlands in 93, that blue water. That blue water at the wetlands with, with uh, yeah. And you can still hear Dave's, yeah, you can hear Dave's guitar. It wasn't as high quality. He wasn't playing a Taylor back then, okay? It wasn't his best sounding guitar, but you could hear his guitar. It was spaced. And the thing that Warren Haynes does that Tim doesn't do, Warren Haynes allows for Dave to play, and he doesn't intrude on Dave's space. He doesn't play satellites. 
Wetlands 90, um, I can look it up because that's on my phone. I was listening to it. Um, it's Live Tracks 20, yep. That's in New York, the Wetlands Preserve. Yeah. And to have and like to, to have Boyd and Warren Haynes and that that blue water, man. Whew, that's just one of the moments like of, of of listening to that for the first time and even listening to it over and over. Just a very, very special moment. And you know, I I came in in 2012. I thought it was dope that Tim Reynolds was playing and that he had that rock feel. I was listening to more rock. I was listening to more Armin Brothers and more um, widespread, like not too much widespread, but like that. Like I was listening to jam band radios and like like random mixes. I didn't really know much widespread back then, but I was listening to electric guitar heavy jam bands. So uh, DMB uh, with the guitar in 2012 was great for me live. But then the more and more I got into the live stuff, I was like, yo, it's better when, when Tim wasn't there fully playing. And again, I had been a fan of the studio stuff since the, the mid 2000s, I would say, when I really got into it. But at first, when the live shows, I thought Tim was awesome. But Warren Haynes and other electric guitar artists, they don't intrude so much on Dave's space than, than that Tim does. And I think that part of it is Dave wants him to. I don't think Dave wants his satellite parts to play out. He wants Tim to just play over him in case he doesn't, he misses a note or something. Like, I think it's, Dave would not allow Tim. He would say, hey, turn Tim down, okay? Just like he's, he's making a, yeah, it sounds like a different band. Really, you could say I've never seen the full DMB experience. I've seen them in an era of 3.0, but I never saw them with Roy. And I really wish I could have. And I was 10, 15 minutes away from some of the most historic concerts in DMB history that were down in Hartford in 99 and 2000 and the 97 show. I was probably somewhere watching Yankees Red Sox, watching Yankees ba baseball or playing street hockey when that concert was going on, 15 minutes away, down the street, uh, just get on the highway, and, and then I was downtown in, in, in you know, 15 minutes. They are evolving, Patrick, and that's what people have to realize. People are pushing for violin, 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 violin. They're not doing it. If they would have done they would have done it by now. I think Dave is just saying no. For better or for worse, he may be stubborn, but he's putting his foot down. And they are changing up and evolving musically. And I think that's great. Buddy Strong, again, I can say it five million times. Intros and outros that he's done are amazing. The intros and outros that Buddy Strong does is amazing. Bartender has new life. Raven has new life. When the World Ends has a funky, cool intro now that makes that song better. So lying in the hands of God, better. Less, you know, Jeff, some of the Jeff Sachs solos were cool. Some of them were put you to sleep. They took that out. They added in Buddy to do his little build up with the keys. Take us to church. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Um, I'll try to get back on. I don't know when I'm doing it next week, but uh, I'll uh, be trying to do If It's not Saturday. It'll be another day. Uh, but follow me on uh, Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. If you guys have Twitter. Um, I'm on there. Message me on Instagram if you guys are following me, because from there, I can tell you guys when I'm going live. All three of y'all put some respect on my name. All three of y'all. No, it's a Bergman reference, but I appreciate you guys. Love talking to you guys about DMV. Appreciate the different perspectives in different parts of the country you guys are. Have a happy Easter, Resurrection Sunday, happy Passover. Um, happy Penguins are out of the playoffs. I hate the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm a Flyers fan. Um, and um, <laughs> so that's the holiday. They got they they, they took the L, and um, that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cannot say that enough. An hour and thirty eight minutes. Someone's gonna look at this video like, whoa, why are they streaming this long? But hey, I appreciate it. I love talking to you guys. And that's all I got for today. All right, peace.